what we're doing right now in this pandemic time is not online learning. So when we talk about online learning, we often talk about a modality. So the means, the mode in which we're doing, use, doing education. So that often is then on the computer, whether it's a live connections, asynchronous, meaning not at the same time. And there's all kinds of different things you can think about. And people like me have very clear definitions of what that looks like. So online learning is uh, a modality of learning that usually utilizes a platform, has an instructor. Sometimes you meet at the same time live. Uh, sometimes everything's independent at your own pace. And sometimes it's kind of a mix of those things together. So um, I think that oftentimes people look down on online learning. We think that online learning is less than, but actually online learning has proven to be just as effective when we have teachers or instructors who are prepared and have the tools and the time to plan for online learning. And we have students who are interested in learning in that modality as well. And so one of the difference between emergency remote teaching and learning and online learning is the preparation of the teachers and students, the opting in for that. In Minnesota, what's happening is emergency remote teaching. And that is also comes from people like me, but not me, scholars in the field who have named it this. And it's a very different thing. Online learning and all these other things are very intentional. They're very planned out. They are strategic. There are strategies for how to engage students. There are, it's, there's a lot there. What's happening right now is emergency remote teaching. It's crisis teaching and learning. This is not a new phenomenon. This has been happening all over the world for various reasons, including war. But this is a very, very quick shift into how to get basic education to students. That's the difference. And we are still in crisis teaching and learning in the state. I think the difference between online learning and emergency remote teaching and learning is how fast we had to make that switch. Uh, thinking back to the skills and knowledge that teachers had, I mean, I often faced resistance about teachers using technology. They thought that we were just trying to push technology for technology's sake. And so there is a lot of K-12 classrooms where technology was non-existent last spring before this happened. So imagine going from that to doing everything online. That's a huge switch. That's an emergency switch um, to solve an issue. And so when you think about a teacher who's been teaching in person for 30 years, a master of their craft, uh, enjoys their job so much, and then um, is being forced to move into a modality that is completely unknown to them. Uh, they don't have the confidence that they used to have. They don't really believe that this is the best thing for students. We underestimate the trauma that that can have for an individual um, who's so committed to their role um, internally on top of that person also experiencing a pandemic as a human. So this has been hard, this has been traumatic, and frankly, teachers haven't even had time to process some of that stuff. And then the other piece is that we still have not solved the equity issues related to learning online. And so that's why we're in this emergency remote. Um, we're putting this like band-aid that keeps breaking back on this uh, wound. But really, I mean, we have so many students that are not getting the same quality of education because they don't have access. They're sharing Wi-Fi with brothers and sisters all at the same time. Um, they have a lot of home responsibilities they're taking care of. And so maybe they're getting on late at night to watch some of the videos and doing what they can. That is not an an ideal education system for anybody. And because of the restrictions with COVID, it makes it even harder to find solutions for that as well too.